Hi, I'm Andy Weinberg with Miller Welders. Today we're with Scott Duggins of PAR Racing Engines out of Spartanburg, South Carolina. Hi, we uh, here at PAR, we build racing engines all the way up to 3,000 horsepower pro mods. And some of our repair work is oil pans, cast aluminum, cylinder heads, even billet aluminum blocks, even all the way up to top fuel level. Today, we're going to be talking specifically about repairing of aluminum cylinder heads using the Dynasty 350 and the Miller Weldcraft W225 Modular TIG Torch. Using the Miller Weldcraft W225 Modular TIG Torch allows us to interchange the head for specific applications. I can easily take the larger head off and change it for a smaller one if I need to get into a tighter area. This way I'm not changing the whole TIG torch, I'm only changing the head. Okay. The heads come in a number of different styles, sizes, and angles to allow you to get into tight joints or work in areas that you normally couldn't get into with a standard TIG torch. So this is the cylinder head that we're going to repair today at Performance Automotive Racing. It's typically a 356 casting and we're going to weld it with a Hobart Maxell TIG 4943 filler metal. Usually the 4043 filler metal is used in this type of an application. However, the Hobart Maxell TIG 4943 filler metal is stronger and flows better with the aluminum castings. And I also like using the torch with the adjustable heads because I will use the big head on the deck surface here and I'll use the smaller head get into th this seat ring area because obviously you cannot get direct with that big head so the smaller head comes into play there a lot and um, one reason I like using the Dynasty 350 several reasons one of the biggest reasons is being in the business that I am trying to run this business answer your telephone answer these guys questions and being the welder uh, I have very little time for any kind of preheating. So I can take this head right here and start dead cold and within a couple of seconds have me a nice good bead and I'm not worried about welding holes and cracks in. Where before with my old welder, I would have to preheat and answer telephone, come back preheat, answer question, come back preheat. It cut my time probably a quarter from what it used to be. And also the machine setup. Like I use memory four. This, this machine's got several memory functions on it and I use memory four for my thick cast stuff because I'm welding here again, I'll weld anywhere from an oil pan to a sheet metal manifold to a cast or billet. And I, I use several different memories. And uh, on the deck side, I will use my memory four, all right? And then I will change settings for my seat ring. So on memory number four, you have a average amperage of 278 amps dialed into the machine. On the wave shaping side, you have 310 amps of electronegative. Electronegative side of the AC is what does the welding power. The EP side, or electropositive side of the AC, he's got that set at 229 amps. That lower amperage on the positive side reduces a lot of the heat that's imposed on the TIG torch, and it also keeps the arc more focused. His balance number is 61%. Balance is a function of cleaning. It's how much oxides are you removing from the aluminum before you weld it. And the AC frequency for the deck setting is set at 76 hertz. 76 hertz gives you a fairly wide bead. The higher that number, the tighter the arc will be. The lower the number, the wider the arc will be, and you can put down a wider bead. Since he's welding the deck of the head, he's gonna put a wider bead down. That's all gonna be surfaced off later anyway, so we're not looking for a lot of bead definition there. We're just looking to deposit some filler metal on the head deck. When he changes to the valve seat area, he's got program number two set at 205 amps of average amperage. 
with your EN being 205 and your EP being 205. Okay. Those numbers being equal will put a little bit more heat on the tungsten. The balance number is 63, but the arc focus has now jumped up to 120 to 130. Remember, that higher the number on the frequency, the tighter the arc. As with any cast head, it's very important to try to get the thing as clean as you can get it before you start your weld. We hot tank this thing, we're uh, bead blasted, which actually this has been soda blasted. Then I'll even grind with a burr, and then after that come back with this stainless steel wire just around all the affected areas. The way I'm gonna start my weld with a deck is in a circular pattern right here to try to get this hole welded up first because I've got water right there. So I'm gonna to try to get this water sewed up before I do anything else. And then we'll change our setting and go back into this seat ring area. So this is the semi-completed head that Scott just got done welding up. From here, it'll go get some grinding and machine work done before it can be finished. Scott first welded the deck of the head at a lower frequency with a wider arc and the bigger head on the torch. He then welded a little bit inside here where he still could get clearance to do that. Then he changed the head to the smaller head to weld down inside the chamber where he had a clearance issue and he needed that smaller head to get in. We also changed the frequency up even a little bit higher afterwards and did a finish pass right around the edge. So you can see this much smaller weld bead here. With older technology machines, that bead would be much, much wider and it would affect a lot more aluminum around it. So the post weld cleanup would be much more intense. For more racing, customizing, and restoring tips, go to MillerWelds.com.